Are we doomed? No. Okay. Might we be doomed? Yes. What's happening? We're not having enough children. Mm. That was at one point the privilege of wealthy Europeans. It became the privilege of Europeans more generally and North Americans. And now the trend to have far too few children to replicate ourselves has spread to quite distant and quite poor countries. In Thailand, in parts of India, they have lower fertility rates than we have. Mm. And if you go generation after generation, having less than a couple of kids per couple, then the population will eventually start falling and it will fall and fall and fall and fall. It will age, that's really problematic, and we'll come on to talk about that. But even apart from the aging, if we never get back to replacement fertility rates, community after community, country after country, society after society will shrink away. The reason I don't think we're necessarily doomed is because somewhere someone is having children. Uh, the question is who, where, and why, I suppose. Bloody, and that's going to change the whole demographics. Well, if it carries on on the current trajectory, then certainly outside sub-Saharan Africa, which is the last place where people are having really substantially sized families, the sorts of people who have big families in London, in New York, in uh, rural America, are people who are not part of very mainstream society. And those communities will grow and the kind of secular mainstream liberal community will wane. And what sort of society we'll end up with, whether there'll be some kind of overarching narrative, some overarching state, I don't know. Interesting. Won't those people being born in those places then move to the cities and then you, you, this sort of stays the same in that sense? Well, the cities have always been a bit of a consumer of people. So if you go back to the 18th century, people had large families in, in the UK, for example, and many people went to London and they died at London. London had a very high death rate. It was very dirty mm. and diseased and people didn't have many children. So the cities were kind of sinks in a way. In a high fertility society, they would absorb people to the bright lights of London, the kind of London of Handel and, and Dr. Johnson, uh, which is a pretty grubby place and they didn't live very long. And in a way, liberal society has become a bit like that. It's, it will eventually be sucking in the children of mm. high fertility communities and possibly converting them to their way of life and low fertility. Or alternatively, the societies which have high fertility will hold on to their children and they will become predominant. So there are two models. There's a model of high fertility societies where they hold on to their kids and those societies grow and grow and grow. And there's another model where those high fertility societies like the Amish, for example, continue to produce lots of children, but lose them to the bright lights in the big city and the secular liberal world where they in turn have low fertility. Mm -hmm. Two models for the future. And we don't know which one yet. No, some societies are better at keeping their young than others. So for example, I write and talk a lot about this subject and I got an email back about three or four months ago from a woman who said, Dr. Morland, I like your stuff and very interested in it, um, but you don't talk enough about traditional Catholics. I'm one of five, my brother's got 11, my sister's got 12, my other brother's got 15, and so I only have three because I started late in life. So she was saying, why don't you talk about traditional Catholics? I think the thing about traditional Catholics, because Catholicism evolved as a majority religion. Catholics can live anywhere, they can travel to Mass, they don't live in closed communities. And so, whilst I wish the best of luck to her brothers and sisters and nephews and nieces, I think an awful lot of them will eff effectively leave that community. I think to, to make a really powerful demographic impact in the developed world, where general background fertility is low and your fertility is high, you've got to hold on to those kids generation after generation. Because at the moment, those high fertility groups are really, really small. Mm. But with exponential growth, they might grow 3% a year while the rest of society is shrinking. So they could become quite predominant. But only that kind of compound growth will only happen if they manage to find ways of holding on to their young. So I think the big challenge for them is how did they hold on to their young? Mm. The big challenge for the rest of us, which I think is more pertinent and probably we should be spending a bit more time talking about, is how we get the general fertility rate of society up, say in the UK, from the 1.6, 1.7 it is today, to somewhere between two and three, so that we can have a bright future, we can have plenty of young people, we can have people entering the workforce, we don't become massively dependent on mass immigration. Mm. We have a younger society 
and we can stop worrying about all the kind of problems that I spend my time talking about. Am I part of the problem because I'm 34, I don't have kids, my fiance is nearly 30 uh, and is doing a, a law training <laughs> degree thing, you know, she's, she's, well, we've got to do a couple of years more of that and another couple, you know, and that kind of thing. Am I am I a problem here? You're totally part of the problem. Yes. But good news is it's not too late. Before you say good news is it's her fault. Good news is it's absolutely <laughs> not her fault. The good news is you found each other oh. and you got married, I believe, which is We're getting. nice. So you're getting married, but yeah. you, you've coupled up. Mm. Um, and I would just suggest don't leave it too long. If, you, if, you, if we're here in 10 years' time and you ask the same question, I'd say, yes, you are part of the problem and there's not much you can do about it at this stage. Mm. Are people delaying, though, because of work? I mean, what, what are some of the reasons that we're having less children, fewer children? So in traditional societies, people have lots of children. As we know, there's a high mortality rate in traditional societies. And we're going back to Britain of 1800, say, and much of the world until 70, 80 years ago, two-thirds of kids didn't make it to reproducing themselves. And people had very large families. And then three things happen. You get urbanization, you get education, and you get a rise in income. And so what happens is death rates for population grows, and then birth rates come down to something like two. And two or three is fine in a society where you're not losing your kids, where there's low infant mortality rates, and infant mortality rates are extremely low in developed countries. So we can afford to say we don't need to have six or seven children with two thirds of them dying, thank goodness. Most of our kids are gonna make it, and so two to three is fine. And that's where Britain was in the 60s, early 70s. But now we've gone down to super low. So it's not just because we're all reasonably educated, and it's not just because we're all reasonably wealthy, and it's not just because most of us live in cities. Something more than that is happening, something deeply cultural. And I think it's about the priorities people have in their lives. And it's not to say they don't want children, but they've just got a lot of other things they want to do. And if we're going to get over this hump, if we're going to solve the problem, children have got to go up the priority list. Mm. Is it, do, you, do you think it might relate to the status game? Uh, this this idea that you know I, I get my status from having a podcast. A lot of people, I know this. People are going to be annoyed. But I, the people get annoyed when I say this, but some people get status through their children. They live. I care. I'm not saying everyone does, but a lot of people do, and that's a status in itself. And then, so I've noticed that so many people who are very ambitious <coughs> about various other things. Um, suddenly drop those other things once they've had kids and that's what their Instagram's about. That's what all the... Is there, is there a status thing? And, and, and do we then need to make children about status? <laughs> I am not a psychologist, hmm. but I think you may be onto something. So I think what we do need to do, whether you call it status or priority, I think children have to, having children and being parents at a reasonably young age has to be something that's cool. And I think it has to be something that you can find a way in modern society to combine with aspiration, with education. I'm not saying anybody should give up the chance of a decent career or the chance of a decent education. I'm simply saying, how do we work into that reproducing ourselves as a society? I don't particularly like the term status. I'm not saying it's wrong, but that almost feels like you're having children to show off. Mm. But I would like people to say, I'm really proud of the fact that in my early 20s or my mid 20s, or even my late 20s, I started to reproduce and I've got these kids they are the most important thing to me. And yes, I've also got my job. Maybe I've got my podcast. Maybe I've got my five-a-side sock, whatever it is. People have loads of things they get on with in their lives and loads of priorities. I just think that having children has slipped too low down the priority list and that's why it gets delayed. And then if you delay it long enough, it becomes difficult. Then we rely on the technology, which is very expensive. It's not always very reliable. The chances of having a child naturally in your late 20s are much higher than trying in your 40s with IVF. So I'm not sure about the word status, but I do think it is about people's psychology. It is about their priorities. And there's a very deep question about why that's changed. And why we have such a low level of uh, aspiration to have children. And again, that's that's complex. It's psychological. It's almost beyond my scope. What I can say is that it is something about priorities that uh, we are having too few children and that we'd better fix it. And that that is something we can all be doing something about. The government has a role, but it's not just about throwing more money at it.